I'm joined now by Theodore Katouf. He's a former U.S. ambassador to Syria and president for a Mideast, a nonprofit focusing on international education and engagement in North Africa and the Middle East. So, Ambassador, uh, Syrian government forces are now in Afrin. Is this a game changer in this Turkish offensive against the Kurds? It's hard to say whether it's a game changer or not. Turkey has uh, its ally, Syrian allies and its own forces on the ground. Uh, attacking Kurdish forces uh, in the northwest of the country along their border. Uh, Russia has basically not tried to interfere with the Turkish advance, uh, but now we're hearing that Syrian, at least militia forces loyal to the regime, are trying to go to the aid of the Kurds. And the Kurds are known to be very determined fighters, so it's going to be far from a cakewalk for the Turks and their allies. Right, I mean, it seems like neither side is backing down. Turkey apparently fired warning shots. Syria calling Turkey's move a blatant attack on its sovereignty. Where do they go from, from there? Well, the whole Syrian imbroglio has gotten even more complicated because even while Assad uh, is going after various pockets of Syrian uh, resistance in the country, if you will, you now have several very important foreign actors on the ground. You have Iran and its allies, such as Hezbollah. Now you have Turkey having entered Syria in a serious way. Of course, you've had Russia there. And you have uh, 2,000 or so American advisors with the uh, Syrian Democratic Forces, mostly Kurdish forces uh, east of the Euphrates River, along with some Arab tribal forces, and recently, Iran provoked Israel with a drone flying into their uh, airspace. And so Israel is now a wild card in the whole equation as well. And, and we're not taking into account any missteps uh, that could happen or miscommunications. If you have all these players, you know, with Turkey inside Syria and now Syrian government forces there to possibly counteract them, um, what happens if there is some sort of misstep? Well, everybody's playing right, up, right on the edge, if you will. For instance, Russia wants to drive a huge wedge between Turkey, our NATO ally, and the United States. Uh, and to do that, they're willing to acquiesce in a Turkish attack on the Kurds. But, you can, but that's more to get at the U.S. It has almost nothing to do with the Kurds, with whom the Syrians up to now, or the Russians up to now have been uh, quite friendly uh, to. Uh, and meanwhile, you have Iran wanting to establish a broader front against Israel, along with Hezbollah in Lebanon, making that front uh, extend into Syria along the Golan Heights. Uh, the Israelis being very wary, the United States uh, uh, wanting to see Iran get a bloody nose, and what better place than Syria right now? So uh, there's a lot of chance for miscalculation. And I, I have to ask you about what's happening outside Damascus right now in this rebel stronghold. Hundreds of civilians, over 200 at last count, killed. Uh, what does that say in the latest in what's happening with the Syrian civil war? Well, what happened is the Syrian League with the Russians uh, made, all, made deals about all these uh, sort of ceasefires, if you will, uh, zones, so they could uh, free up their forces to go attack ISIS in the eastern uh, Euphrates uh, area. Uh, but now, with ISIS pretty much subdued, uh, the Syrians want to uh, resume the fighting, uh, irregardless or regardless of the agreements the Russians and they made with these various uh, factions, these various Syrian opposition factions. And the, as we saw in Aleppo, the Syrians' are, uh, regime is quite merciless on the, in these uh, attacks. They don't want to risk their forces. They don't want to fight a war of attrition house to house. And so they will attack hospitals, schools, virtually ambulances, anything that moves. Ambassador uh, Katufa, always great to hear your insight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.